I want to read something to you from Paul, his epistle to the Romans. He says, Aren't you aware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism unto death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. Paul goes on to say, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that when you offer yourselves as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin leading to death or to obedience leading to righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you once were slaves to sin, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. For when you were slaves to sin, you were free of obligation to righteousness. What fruit did you reap at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The outcome of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the fruit you reap leads to holiness, and the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This is Roland, and today I want to talk about stress again, and I want you to understand what stress really is. You see, ideally, we ought not to be reacting to anything. Ideally, we would be in the world, but not of the world. Things wouldn't affect us, bother us, irritate us, make us nervous in any way. We would simply observe. And then we would wonder about some things, and the answer would come from above. It would come by way of intuition. All of a sudden, we would just see but otherwise, a lot of times, we wouldn't even have to wonder. We would just watch. We would observe. You know, it's like I've said so many times over the years. If you were on vacation in another country as a tourist, why, you would watch the people and you would see the buildings and the trees and the lakes and the ponds and you would see so many things it would all be rather interesting. Some things you might wonder about, but it wouldn't make you angry. It wouldn't make you upset. You would just watch and wonder. In fact, that's sort of the way you were when you were a little child. You saw things, and you wondered about things. But mostly, you just enjoyed things. Your puppy, your toys, the beautiful grass outside and the leaves and the snow and the icicles and the water. You just loved it all. It was just wonderful. And when you saw something you didn't quite understand, you just watched it and you pondered and you wondered. That's all. Life was sweet, but something happened. And what happened was that you were penetrated by something on the outside. Many things actually, but you were penetrated by someone who wanted to upset you, who wanted to get to you, who wanted your allegiance, who wanted you to see them in a certain light, in a good light. Someone who seemed to not cherish your independence, and your carefree, blithe spirit. They seemed, something in them seemed to hate your carefreeness. It's like they wanted to take it away. It's like they wanted to pressure you. So you were penetrated by that. And the proof of the penetration is two things. Number one, emotions. You see, had you never been traumatized, and there's the word trauma, had you never been traumatized, 
had you never been penetrated by things on the outside and people on the outside, you wouldn't be emotional. You would not be emotional. You would be calm. Sure, you would know something of a higher set of emotions like delight, awe, wonder, joy. You see, those are of a higher caliber, reverence, you see. But as far as anger, rage, hurt feelings, jealousy, envy, resentment, bitterness, unhappiness, you wouldn't have known it. No, you wouldn't. But you were penetrated. And someone emotionalized you. And then, here's what happened. The second thing, I said the first proof is emotions. The second proof is a memory. A memory that keeps coming back. You know, most of us have millions of memories in our mind that really oughtn't to be there. You know, every morning we should basically wake up fresh with fresh eyes, and we wouldn't have a memory of the day before. Sure, you would remember your name, your phone number, and you would remember, you know, your mom's face and your partner's face, and you would have a muscle memory of how to drive your car, and like that. See, it's mostly automatic. Most of those things are just automatic. They're practically subconscious, aren't they? I mean, you can, you can put on your, your clothes and grab a bite to eat and get in your car and go somewhere, and you can do all those things. You don't even have to think about it. It's so easy. It's just automatic. Your body knows how to do it. But that would be about all you would have. Otherwise, you wouldn't have any memories of the day before. But how about now? Well, you have a lot of memories. Oh, no, I've got to pay this bill. What did my boss mean when he said that? Why did my wife have to say that? What does she want? Why are my kids doing this? What? Oh, no, I've got to go to this, and I've got to do that. And why did this happen? And, oh, I've got to do all kinds of memories. And then there are memories from the past that haunt, that haunt you, where somebody did something to you where somebody betrayed you, where you lost something, where you made a fool of yourself, where people laughed at you, where something was stolen, things like that. See, you were traumatized and penetrated by them, and now you have a memory of them. So here's what I'm suggesting. I don't have a lot of time. Incidentally, this program is actually a 30-minute program. Many of you are only getting the 15-minute version, so I want you to know that it's a half-hour program. The second half of the program is always very good, very informative, and often sweet. And you better go listen to it. Go to SheddingShackles.com, SheddingShackles.net, or SheddingShackles.us. Listen to this program and all the others on, at our radio archives. It's very simple. Now, the other thing I want to say, this is a 15-minute program, but I've written a lot of books. I've written 22 books. Most of them are available on Amazon.com. I've made hundreds and hundreds of hours of YouTube lectures, and I have many, many articles and wonderful resources that are free. All you have to do is go to SheddingShackles.com, net, or SheddingShackles.us, and you can access them for free. So we're talking now about trauma, and what I'm suggesting is that, is that to return to being yourself, to return to being sovereign over your own mind and body, to return to peace of mind, to return to joy, to return to all of those things that you once had when you were a little child. You have to un find a way that it all be undone. And you know you can make your start in a lightning flash. All it takes is hearing someone like me and then saying, 
Yeah, you know something, Roland? You're right. I'm not leading my own life. I'm too emotional. I'm reacting to everything. Things upset me and make me nervous. And, and I, I ought to be calm and I don't know how. I ought to be patient with my kids that I don't know how. I ought to be joyful and somehow I'm not. Just admit it and realize that emotions have something to do with it. And what someone did to you in the past has something to do with it. Not so much what they did, but how you reacted to it. And realize that they got to you. Now, you were just a little kid. You didn't know any better. There was no one there to teach you. There was no one there to set a good example, hardly. You may have had a good uncle or a good older brother or someone that was calm and patient and had a lot of love and understanding, but maybe you didn't. So now, the first thing you must learn how to do is to seal off more upsets and angers and so on, and by using a little meditation to learn how to stand back and be a little bit objective to things. So you can go out in the world and be in the world, but not of the world, and observe people without hating them. Observe people without resenting them. Hear what people say, let it go in one ear and out the other, without reacting to it. So when you, when you do that, then you'll calm down. You'll be less prone to being compromised. And then the next thing, then you'll have to look at what's gotten inside. But what's gotten inside can be very complicated and can go very deep and can go back, way back. And there's a root. There's a root to it. It goes way back, often to very early childhood. And so you, you, you will gradually, if you do the meditation and you have an attitude of wanting to know the truth, and you don't want to hate people anymore. And you're willing to let go and let God a little bit. Then in God's light, the inner light, that's what you fell from. Then the inner light will shine upon those things in a very slow process that takes a long time. And you'll see a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more and you'll have understanding. When you have understanding, you become free of it. Do you see? But you can't make it happen yourself. All you, all you need to do is do your little meditation morning, noon, and evening and then go out in the world and be patient with people and it will happen. The good will happen. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so you just kind of wandered through the world and reacted to things and people upset you. And before you know it, you began to doubt yourself and you began to wonder. And it, it separated you from your inner ground of being. That's what I want to say. It separated you, the trauma, the emotions, the memory. See, every one of them does it. The trauma itself separated you in the shock of the moment. The memory separates you. Whenever you, you, you fall into the memory of what happened in the past, what they did or what they said to you, immediately you lose touch with your inner ground of being. And the emotions, whenever you become emotional about anything, you lose touch with your inner ground. And then what happens? Well, then you're like an animal and not like a human. I'll give you another example. Whenever you make something too important. In other words, I want you to see the subtlety of it. If somebody grabs your attention, they say something rude, something mean, something naughty, something suggestive, and it gets to you, it excites you a little bit, or it angers you, or it makes you resentful or something, or it makes you curious. If it gets to you, then it forms a memory. But what happens is that you, have, you lose sovereignty over your own body. Now they have sovereignty over you. And you will find a very strange change of allegiance. Your allegiance ought to be to what is right, to what you know deep in your heart is right, to those eternal verities, those ideals and to what you know deep down is good and fair and right. That's where your allegiance should always be. But what happens when 
something gets your attention, or a person gets your attention, or they steal your attention with something shocking or mean or rude or suggestive, then a, a strange change of allegiance takes place. And you, you have a new allegiance, a new servitude. I can't think of the word I want, but now you're oriented toward it. It could be anything. And here's the subtlety of it. Let's suppose that, that you're rushing to get to the line before somebody else gets there. You're in the grocery store. You see somebody heading for the checkout counter with their shopping cart. And you make your goal. You want to get there first. And so you rush. Do you see that when you do that, when that goal has captured your attention, your allegiance now is to it. And you serve it. And you forget all about love, about compassion. You forget all about manners and about courtesy and about everything. The only thing is it. And then if someone questions you, why? You defend it. You defend the wrong that you were just doing, rushing to the line to get ahead of somebody else. See what I mean? Or if you're playing a game and it becomes too important, then what happens? You forget all about sportsmanship and about camaraderie and you forget about um, what's important in life and you make winning too important. Do you see that? So, you know, you, you could substitute in just about anything in your life that you've made too important. Your self-image, saving face, money, getting ahead of someone else, not making a mistake, not looking bad, some game, some gambling, some item you want. Anything that you make that is too important. Now, how did it become too important? Well, you somehow were seduced, weren't you? You weren't born as a gambler. You weren't born rushing to the head of, try to get ahead of other people. You weren't born with an attitude of, of me first. I want to win, win, win. The heck with friendship. The heck with sportsmanship. No, you weren't born that way. You weren't born, money, money, I got to have money. You weren't born defensive and angry, angry and hostile and determined to put others down and not let them put you down. You weren't born that way. You became that way, how? Through your having been seduced into it. So now I want you to see that that's what trauma is all about. It changes your allegiance. And now you know why you have all of your addictions and why you're a people pleaser, and why you're angry all the time. Just about everything that's gone wrong, it goes back to trauma, it goes back to being seduced, it goes back to emotions, it goes back to memories, and now that's your environment, and they become your Lord. So you have to find a way back to your Creator, and His truth, and His love, and His patience, and His kindness, and his wisdom, and serve him. That's right. So you're, you've been serving everything wrong, but you didn't want it to be that way, but it happened. And how did it happen? Through trauma, through emotions. You need to see that. You had a weakness. They could get to you, and they did. Now just see that. Wipe the egg off your face. Bear the little bit of pain of seeing it, and now see if you can find your way back to your Creator. And in that regard, my little meditation is very helpful.